Greetings. So in statistics, we typically try and look at probabilities. How likely is something to happen? And explaining this to someone else. And what I want to look at right now is how certain probabilities work or fit together. Suppose I have a four-sided die. They do make such a creature. And typically what you get off of this is not surprising. I can toss a 1, I can toss a 2, I can toss a 3, or I can toss a 4. Now then, is it possible to toss both a 1 and a 2 at the same time? Is it possible that when I get finished tossing that I have more than one outcome on a die? And the answer is no. You have experience with a six-sided die, and it does the same thing. Now, if this die is not rigged, it's a fair die, each of these outcomes has a probability of one-fourth occurrence. That's referred to as a theoretical uh, probability. Because there's four options, if each is equal, I divide the total of all the probability, which is 1, by the number of options, which is 4, to get 1 fourth. Now, since these are said to be different outcomes, they are said to be mutually exclusive. What this means is they do not share or overlap. I'll show you in, a, in just a moment a probability that is not mutually exclusive so we can compare this. But a mutually exclusive question might be, what is the probability of tossing a 1 or tossing a 3? Well, look at your sample space. That is your total outcomes right here. That's what this is referred to as is the sample space. Your sample space has four options in it. When I look at my sample space, I see the probability of tossing a 1 is 1 fourth. The probability of tossing a 3 is also 1 fourth. And since these are mutually exclusive, I can see the word or, and I change that to say this is the same as the, the probability of tossing a 1 plus the probability of tossing a 3. And each of these is 1 fourth. So I see 1 fourth plus 1 fourth for a total outcome of 2 fourths. Now we could have gotten that answer by simply looking at the table and asking ourselves, well, if I'm looking for a 1 or a 3, I see a 1 here. I see a 3 here, so there's two desirable outcomes, this 2 right here, for a total sample space of 4, which gives me my denominator. So my arithmetic saying turn ORs into plus signs makes perfect sense. But it does because of this idea of a mutually exclusive events. Let's look at an option where you do not have a mutually exclusive event. What is the probability of tossing an even number or tossing a 4? Well, now we have two simple events, and I'm going to follow the rule as if it were mutually exclusive. Well, this would mean this should be equal to the probability of tossing an even number plus the probability of tossing a 4. Now then, what's the probability of tossing an even number? Well, even numbers are 2's and 4's, and I see 2 of those out of a sample space of 4. So the probability of even is 2 out of 4. Then we see plus, and now we ask, what's the probability of tossing a 4? Well, that's 1 fourth, because there's 1 4 out of a sample space of 4. So I see 1 fourth. When I add this together, 
I would see a total probability of three-fourths. But is that the correct answer? And the answer is no, that's not. Because there's not three evens, there's not a, you know, four. I counted this guy twice. The four happens to belong to both events. Therefore, these events are not mutually exclusive. What we have to do now is figure out how to handle this prop, this situation. I'm going to continue this video and talk about now what do we have to do. This is simply not equal to the probability of even plus the probability of four. It's not that simple. Something else must be going on. Well, we just talked about the four was counted twice. Well, why is the four counted twice? Because the four is here, and then what word, what conjunction would I use to say it's also right there in even? The word is and. Four and even go together, hand in glove. So when you look at this right here, I don't want these calculations here. I'm going to go up now, and I'm going to say that the probability of even or four is the same as the probability of even plus the probability of four, but then we must remove the probability of even, and I'm going to capitalize my word, four. What we're doing by removing this is removing any events that occurred more than once in here. So even gives us two out of four because it counts the two and the four from the set over here. We get one out of four because there's one four out of all of the outcomes. But the four was counted over here already, so we're going to subtract anything that is four and even, which happens to be just the four in this case. So therefore, what we can do is if we do this arithmetic, we see the probability of tossing an even number or a four is exactly going to be two-fourths, which makes sense. I hope this helps.